smiling again? Nope. It's a pollinator protest. Without pollinators, like bees, we wouldn't be able to eat any of this stuff. And lots of pollinators are in trouble. Welcome back to Vidigrow! Today, we're going to help pollinators out by making some hotels for them to hide in and planting some flowers for them to slurp nectar out of. But before we get started, let's hear some more about pollinators and chocolate and dinosaurs. What's the story, Rosie? Pollinators are insects like bees, butterflies, beetles, flies and wasps. They help plants with flowers to reproduce, to have babies. And flowers provide them with tasty nectar in exchange. Flowers use this nectar and their bright colours to attract pollinators. And as the insects slurp up the flower's nectar, bits of pollen get stuck to them. When they go to drink nectar from another flower of the same kind, this pollen fertilises its eggs to make seeds. This is called pollination, and we rely on this process for over a third of the food we eat, including almost all fruits and vegetables, and some other important things, like tea, coffee, and cocoa for chocolate. It's quiz time! Without pollination, lots of food, like fruits and vegetables, would disappear. Thumbs up for true, thumbs down for false. It's true! Your diets would be pretty boring without them. A bit like mine. Pollination began when the first flowers appeared on Earth, which was about 140 million years ago, when dinosaurs were still roaming the Earth. Before this, the only plants that existed were things like trees, ferns and mosses. The very first pollinators were just regular insects like flies, beetles and wasps who decided nectar was quite tasty. In fact, some wasps liked nectar so much that they decided to go completely vegetarian, abandoning their usual carnivore diet of other insects. It's these very creatures that evolved into the bees we know today. Anyway, pollinators have been working hard for over a hundred million years, turning the planet into a colourful world of flowers, fruits and vegetables. Our human species turned up less than half a million years ago, and we probably never would have if it wasn't for pollinators, there wouldn't have been much for us to eat. For over 95% of our short time on Earth, we Homo sapiens lived as hunter-gatherers, and didn't cause too much trouble for these ancient pollinating insects. As farming and civilizations developed very recently, we still gave these creatures the respect they deserve, and many societies worship pollinators and bee gods, including the ancient Mayans, Egyptians, Greeks and Romans. More quiz! Humans have been on Earth much longer than pollinators. True or false? No way, Jose! Pollinators have been around for over a hundred million years. Humans haven't even been around for half a million yet. Today, many people have forgotten the importance of pollinators and we're putting their lives at risk. Most pollinators rely on flower nectar for their food, but there are less and less flowers around as our cities spread into the countryside. In the last 100 years, Britain has lost 97% of its flowery grassland. This wasn't just where pollinators found their food, it's where they lived. And as well as our towns and cities spreading into the countryside, we filled most of what's left of it with cereal monocrops like wheat, oats and barley which don't have flowers and leave few places for pollinators to make their homes. Monocrops also often rely on chemical pesticides which can be harmful to insects. All sorts of pollinators are at risk, like wasps, flies, butterflies and beetles. Bees are particularly suffering and in Europe one in ten bee species now faces extinction. This isn't just about saving fluffy insects. We humans wouldn't last long without them. Last quiz! Pollinators are struggling to find places to live and food to eat because of the way humans are living and farming. True or false? Sadly, it's true, but we're going to do something about it. Here's your quiz prize! 
Oh, wakey shaky. Give yourselves a shake. It's time to get gardening. What can we do about this unbelievable situation? Okay, that one was bad. Well, you guessed it, we can spread the word and talk to everyone about what we've learned. And we can do some planting and making. Step one. Plant some colourful flowers with lots of juicy nectar for pollinators to drink. Here's what you'll need. Some wildflower seed mix. You can get it in most big supermarkets. And a spoon. If you don't have a garden, take your seeds out for a walk and scatter them on any sad looking soil. They don't need burying, but you can if you like. Or make some paper pots. Or recycle an old yogurt pot. Or a pair of welly boots. Wildflowers like bad soil. They don't like compost. So just grab a spoon and sneak a bit from any old wear. Pop a few seeds in the top, cover them up a bit, and then wait for them to grow. Don't forget to water them. And if you do have a garden, you can still pop your seeds in pots, or you can scatter them around any bits of bare soil, or around some veg that you've planted. Basically, put them anywhere and everywhere. Spread some flowery colour and rainbow happiness. That to make a B, B and B. Did you know there were about 276 bee species in the UK? Only one of these is the honeybee, which live in hives. 25 are types of bumblebee, which build nests. And all the rest are solitary bees, which live alone. Can you work out how many solitary bee species there are? Yes, that's 250 solitary bee species. Solitary bees like to live alone. Two thirds of them burrow in the ground and just need some open soil, which we can make by digging up a bit of grass. And one third of them nest above the ground in little holes. These are harder to come by, so we can make some for them. Here's what you'll need. Some toilet roll tubes. Some old bits of cardboard, cereal packets are the best. And some scissors and string. And some cello cello tape. Roll up some bits of cardboard. This is the little tunnels your bees will live in. And just keep on rolling until you filled your whole toilet roll. Make sure you stick a bit of cardboard on the back, otherwise the wind will blow right through and your bees will get cold. You can just make one if you like and decorate it, or you can make loads and stick them all together to make a big bee hotel. Another option, if you can find a handful of dried stems and twigs, is to grab them in a bundle and stick them in a nice warm cardboard box. Be careful not to break them up too much or the bees might hurt themselves. Then you can decorate it! Nice, Rosie! You could probably make it a bit more colourful though. You know how bees like it nice and bright. You can paint them, you can colour them, spread the sunshine. Talking of which, make sure you put your bee b, &B &B in full sun, somewhere south facing if you can. Watch our video on finding a sunny spot to help. And find something to keep them dry too. 
you, it's nearly treat time. Final step is to go around feeling all smug about how you have done something to protect pollinators and the human food supply. And of course, spread the word. We've got a challenge for you. Can you make a poster to tell everyone about what you've learned? Why pollinators are so important, why they're in trouble, and what we can do about it. Pop it up in your window, ask an adult to share it on social media, and send us a picture by emailing vidigro at gmail.com. We'll be sending out prizes for the best ones, so don't forget to include your name and address. I can't wait to see them. We might even show yours in next month's video. Make sure you don't miss it on the 1st of June. We'll be getting friendly with pest munchers like birds, ducks, slow worms and hedgehogs. And learning what all this has to do with the web of life. See you on the 1st of June. Oh, and your treat. You still there? Yeah. No, not you. Are you still there? You watching at home? Your prize is a secret bonus video. Don't tell anyone. Just type in VIDI Grow into YouTube search next Friday and you'll find it.